Humans are responsible for building basically everything we know in the modern world. From incredible monuments, mind-bending scientific creations, and so much more. Humans have built some truly wonderful things that are beacons of hope across the world. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting and crazy things people have built. David Hahn built a nuclear reactor. David, at the time this story takes place, was a teenager. A teenage boy scout that had a home-built nuclear reactor inside his shed. He's now known as the radioactive boy scout. Known as the goofy kid, David could often be found as early at the age of six doing various science experiments in the garage of his home. He was most specifically passionate about chemistry. At the same time he would be experimenting, his parents were getting a divorce, and he then had to spend every weekend at a different house his mum and her boyfriend at the time lived in. By the time he was ten, he had a passion for chemistry which was only fueled further by a gift from his grandfather. The Golden Book of Chemistry Experiments Given his situation at the time in a new place, with no friends, he'd get lost in the book and really fell in love with chemistry. It was also around this time he went from doing science experiments in the garage to turning it into his own lab. Chemistry experiments were his favourite thing to do, and he spent a large portion of his time doing odd jobs and delivering newspapers so he could afford various supplies for his lab and experiments. There are many stories about how he'd turn up to the Boy Scouts with an entirely orange face after an experiment gone wrong, as well as wanting to make fireworks he had set on fire at the Boy Scout camp. As you can imagine, that didn't go so well. Arguably, the worst of his failed experiments was when he was conducting an experiment involving red phosphorus inside a glass container, which went horribly wrong, causing the glass to explode with glass covering the area. His hands and eyes were affected, with glass shards going into his eyes, and he was rushed to the hospital. David also set fire to his house during his own chemistry experiment. Now instead of stopping these wild experiments, which certainly wasn't normal for someone his age, or anyone for that matter, his mother allowed him to convert the outside shed into his new lab. At the age of 14, David would go on to create a model for a nuclear reactor in his shed. He even wrote papers on nuclear fission and energy, and was awarded his Atomic Energy Merit Badge. David began building his new invention without his mum knowing. Over the course of the next two years, David built his nuclear breeder reactor. This is how a teenager managed to get his hands on the materials needed to create a nuclear reactor. He would impersonate a physics teacher, and by getting in contact with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, David now knew all the necessary components needed and how to put them together to build a reactor. All he needed was the materials. Continuing to pretend to be a teacher, he would write hundreds of letters to different agencies and organisations in order to obtain a small amount of nuclear material. Then, hundreds of smoke alarms, lithium-ion batteries, and glowing-the-dark clocks. The older models contained radium. He imported uranium from Russia, and a bunch of duct tape later, David had his own working nuclear reactor in his shed, built by himself. After a couple of days had passed from completing the reactor, he noticed radiation levels around the area were getting alarmingly high, and made the decision to get rid of it. As he was placing the reactor into the trunk of his car, his neighbours, who thought he was stealing tyres, called the police, who then proceeded to find this nuclear reactor within his car. After David had pleaded them not to open it, as it was radioactive, the police panicked and called in the bomb squad, and David was arrested. The charges were dropped on the condition David was not allowed to return to his lab until the area was radiation-free. After this, he was approached to be tested on, as he had been working so closely with nuclear material for so long, they wanted to study the effects. David declined, as he said he'd rather not know. Stanley Meyer's car. Stanley Meyer was an American man born in the 1940s. 
It said that he had created the water fuel cell, which he could use to fuel a car on, instead of petrol. All he would need to do is fit his water fuel cell to a car, and it could run with water. In 1996, these extraordinary claims were found to be false and fraudulent in court. Stanley reportedly said that the water fuel cell would work by splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen would be burnt to create energy to fuel the car. The device would need less energy for electrolysis to take place than the minimum predicted to be required by conventional science at the time. The fuel cell was reported to use Brown's gas, which is a mixture of oxyhydrin, to then be combined with what's known as ambient air, which is a combination of carbon dioxide, methane, oxygen, carbon monoxide, as well as many other things. If Stanley's claims were true as he stated, then it would go against the law of thermodynamics. However, this didn't stop Stanley from demonstrating his supposedly working water fuel cell in an automobile on local live television. Claiming to have placed injectors that would carry out the water splitting instead of normal spark plugs. Despite this, as mentioned previously, in 1996 Stanley's claims were ruled to be false and he was labelled as a fraud by court and actually ordered to pay two investors in the fuel cell compensation. As it stands, his theory didn't actually work, and scientific magazines have gone on to label water fuel as merely a myth. Sadly, just two years later, in 1998, Stanley, whilst dining out, suffered a reported aneurysm and passed away. Dutch man builds life-size Noah's Ark As a child, we all heard the biblical story of Noah's Ark, in which Noah, instructed by God, built a huge vessel able to hold two of each of the world's animals to be saved from an enormous world-ending flood. While a Dutch man by the name of Johan has constructed his own two-scale, according to the Hebrew Bible, replica of Noah's Ark. Finished in 2012 to the exact specifications noted in the Hebrew Bible, him and six other builders would use an enormous steel frame and enough wood that would equate to a reported 12,000 trees to complete the ark. It would be open to public as a temporary attraction with the goal of teaching children and giving them the opportunity to see a life-size ark for themselves. Inside has been filled with life-size scale models of various animals as reported in the Bible. However, the attraction has now been closed due to disagreement with the town officials where the ark is located. This mammoth project ended up costing over a reported $1.6 million to complete and stands at 75 feet tall and 410 feet long. The Ark also weighs a staggering 2,500 tons. It was intended to sail to Brazil for the 2016 Olympics that were held in Rio. However, the plans fell through and now it has the end goal of being transported to Jerusalem but is still in the process of raising the over $1 million needed. The stories we've talked about today aren't always successful, but it does show that humans are always trying and testing to figure out what works and what doesn't. So what do you make of these crazy and interesting inventions? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.